Hi Dave. Hello Bessie. It's amazing to have you in Budapest. Usually you're out there on Twitter and here we are in the same room. It's amazing, right? It is. I thought for the first video uh, we could do one strange thing. You would describe uh, one line of your vision about the future of healthcare and medicine. Mm -hmm. Then I describe one line of my visions about the future of healthcare and medicine and we go one by one until we run out. And this is unrehearsed. Exactly. Pure spontaneity. You see what comes out of it. Okay. Okay. You first. My vision is that doctors and patients will have a common view of the same complete data set. I think patients will be the point of care. Patients will be the point of care and will define what needs to be done at different times, not just when there's a doctor appointment. I think doctors will be guides for patients in the jungle of health, medical, and digital information. I think patients will have a greater and greater ability to find the information they need, sometimes with and sometimes without their doctors and nurses. I think patients and their medical professionals will have to become some sort of a data analyst. I think patients and their medical professionals will have to adjust to the reality that certainty is uncertain and the truth keeps changing. I think in order to make it happen, um, stakeholders of healthcare must acknowledge that digital health is a cultural transformation, not technological one. And cultural transformations, unfortunately, tend to take a generation each. So we will all need to learn to loosen up and say, my gosh, the rules are different this year. I think proactive patients will lead this change not to make it a generation long, but maybe to happen in a few years' time. Ah, what can we do in a world where what was printed in a book is probably wrong by the time you get it? That's why I think the ivory tower is no more. Well, you know, there are a lot of tenants in the ivory tower who probably aren't happy about that. I think the really advanced technologies like artificial intelligence will keep on making them less reluctant to change. And if you combine that with social empowerment, you know, the evolution of the really autonomous patient and family, they will be in a position to say whether the AI is any good. I think this way, automation will replace some jobs in medicine, but will also create new ones. And when those new jobs get created and others get replaced, what I hope to see is a real evolution toward care that is oriented around what's really important to the people who have the problem. I think digital health technologies, the let physicians and patients focus on each other, focus on the human touch, put the real life connections in the spotlight, you know, maybe for the first time in the history of medicine. And this is already starting to happen. I have exchanges with my physician. I just had one today where I emailed him about something and he wrote back and said, don't forget to put this in the system so other people who care for you can see it. I think without doubt, digital health is the only future. Certainly. Well, you know, if it ain't digital, it can't be measured. Or if it is measured, it's got to be put in digits or you can't focus on any improvement. I have to say, I run out or we will go on doing this for hours. Well, that would be fine with me. I just want to say that my entire life, I was known as a smart kid and a smart guy in industry, but I did not become effective at improving my health until I got digital tracking tools. So my, one of my rules when I speak to audiences of innovators is if something happened, it must be possible, you know? And so there's no question to me that better health is enabled by digital tools. That's the best finishing life you can have for this video. Thank you so much. Good dude.